Hi, last week I made a video to explain the education financing in Singapore to explain to Singaporeans how the Singapore government is making Singaporeans double pay on education. This week, today, I am going to share with you the healthcare financing in Singapore and to show you how the Singapore government is making Singaporeans double pay as well on their healthcare. So let's start. Uh, I am going to use 2016 figures to illustrate uh, because uh, these figures are more readily available on the different websites, on the Singapore government's website. So in 2016, Singaporeans paid $35.9 billion into the CPF, but there is no breakdown as to how much Singaporeans actually pay into the Medisafe. But what we know is that Singaporeans aged 35 and below pay 37% of their wages into the CPF. And of that, they pay 8% into the Medisafe. And this proportion actually increases over time. So based on this, you can calculate that Singaporeans pay at least, at least $7.8 billion into the Medisafe in 2016. But this is a conservative estimate. If we divide um, the CPF contributions according to the labor force numbers, as well as the Medisafe contributions across the ages, you might actually get double this amount or $14.5 billion in terms of Medisafe contributions in 2016. And this is derived based on dividing the CPF contributions according to the labor force as well as the Medisafe uh, contributions uh, across the different age groups. Of this, if we look at the $7.8 billion, if, uh, most probably Singaporeans could be paying anything in between, say, 10 to $12 billion, or it could even be more, but there is no breakdown, so we can't say for sure. But in 2016, what we do know is that of the Medisafe that Singaporeans pay, they only get back $0.9 billion in terms of actual medical expenses. Comparing this to $7.8 billion is only 10% of what Singaporeans pay. Or if you look at the overall, if it's up to $15 billion, it is only less than 5% of what Singaporeans pay that goes into actual medical expenses. The rest of the 90-95% to actually goes into surplus for the GIC and the Tomasic Holdings via the reserves. Now, if we look at health expenditure in 2016, the government says that the government expenditure for health for that year, what the government spent was $9.3 billion. In effect, what Singaporeans are paying could actually, if we take $10 billion as a figure, would actually cover the total government subsidies do the government do the total health expenditure in Singapore. It is estimated that uh, based on the World Health Organization, about 50% of the funds for total health expenditure is covered by the Singapore uh, by Singapore uh, government subsidies. About 5% is actually for from the Medisafe, which means that this 0.9 billion Based on the IPS uh, study that was done uh, a few years ago, about 5% of the total health expenditure actually comes from Medisafe. So this, amounts, this amount that Singaporeans actually are able to take out from Medisafe every year only accounts for 5% of total health expenditure. In the same IPS study, it was shown that only 2% comes from Medis MediShield. The rest comes from private expenditure, as well as out-of-pocket expenditure. According to World Health Organization figures, about 30% of the total health expenditure in Singapore actually comes from out-of-pocket expenditure, which means out of our own pockets. So you can imagine that if only 5% comes from this amount in Medisafe, 
and 30% comes from out of pocket expenditure and 30% is six times this Medisave expenditure, which means that even if we use whatever Singaporeans pay in a year, if we use a conservative estimate, Singaporeans pay 7.8 billion. If we use 80% of that money, it will cover for both out-of-pocket expenditure and that Medisave expenditure and give Singaporeans free education. Even if we use the maximum estimate that I am putting out here, it will only take 40% and Singaporeans will have free healthcare for the whole year. Now the question is, why is the government making Singaporeans pay anywhere between 7.8 billion to 15 billion a year into Medisafe, but now only allowing Singaporeans to take out 0.9 billion dollars, which is only 5 to 10 percent of what we pay in a year for Medisafe, and which only covers for 5 percent, when we have to actually pay out of pocket for another 30 percent based on World Health Organization's statistics, which means that what Singaporeans are paying in a year, including for taxes and for Medisafe, can give us free education for a year, free healthcare for a year, sorry. But the government is still making Singaporeans pay 30%. In effect, Singaporeans are actually double paying because we're actually paying enough to sustain the total health expenditure in a year. Now, this is not even it. Because if you look at the total Medisafe balance that has been accumulated, since 1984, the government has accumulated $83 billion in Medisafe balance in, by, uh, by 2016. Which means that if Singaporeans are only able to get back $0.9 billion in 2016, this is only 1% of the total Medisafe balance in 2016. So, if I could summarize this part. Of the money that Singaporeans pay in a year for Medisafe, they only get back 5 to 10% of what they pay in a year. Of what Singaporeans have paid since 1984 and what is accumulated in the Medisafe since 1984, it's since 1984, Singaporeans only get back 1% of the total Medisafe balance. Now, this total Medisafe balance is actually four to five times what Singapore's total health expenditure is, is in a year, which means that the Singapore government has accumulated four to five times what Singaporeans have to pay for healthcare in a year. In effect, the total Medisafe balance can give Singaporeans free healthcare for five years. Now, there's another thing. Of the, Medis of the Medisafe that Singaporeans pay, 0.9 billion goes into the actual Medisafe uh, medical expenses. Another 2.1 billion actually goes into premiums for MediShield Life, premiums for Eldershield, etc. Now the government covers a bit of the subsidies, but after the subsidies are removed, 4.1 billion will actually be used for Medis MediShield premiums, Eldershield premiums. In effect, when Singaporeans pay anywhere between 7.8 billion to 15 billion a year, a huge chunk of this actually goes into premiums. So the government then therefore takes this money out to invest in another medical scheme to allow them to also earn money from it. Now what you have to know is that all this surplus that is not used where does this money go? This money goes into government bonds that are then transferred into the national reserves and which are then transferred to GIC for their investment. Tomasic Holdings has access to this money as well. So what this means is that every year, Singaporeans only get back 10 5 to 10% of the Medisafe they pay for actual medical expenses or 1% of the total Medisafe balance. 
And this money that Singaporeans pay can actually give you free health care in a year. But the Singapore government makes Singaporeans pay another 30% out of pocket or more, which means that Singaporeans are double paying on their health. And all this money that is left in surplus actually goes into the bonds, reserves, and JIC and Tamasic to earn. And there is no transparency at all as to how much they are earning or what they are investing in using Singaporeans' money. Now, the question is, if you know that what you are paying can actually give you free health care if the MediSafe is risk pooled so that everyone gets access to the money to pay for the health care. And take note, even if we get free health care, it will only use up 40 to 80% of the MediSafe that we use a year depending on how much is actually collected, which means that the MediSafe can keep accumulating surpluses and there is still longevity to it. Well, why is the government making Singaporeans double pay and then earning this money and transferring it via this system into the GIC and Tamasic holdings when Singaporeans can have free can have free healthcare today and not have to double pay so that they can save this money for themselves. In fact, MediSafe contributions can also be reduced so that Singaporeans might not need to pay so much and still be able to get free healthcare and have surplus in the MediSafe to accumulate. All this is doable in the current system that Singapore has right now. But the question is, the Singapore government prefers to earn profits and surpluses from Singaporeans. Now the question therefore you have to ask yourself is, if this a, is this a fair system? And one more thing that I have to let you know as well is that other than what Singaporeans are paying into MediSafe, what they are paying into taxes, and what they are paying out of pocket, as well as what they have to take out of their MediSafe, as well as cash to pay for premiums for Elder Shield, MediShield, etc., Singaporeans are also paying in 2016 $1.4 billion into private MediShield integrated shield plans. So the government is not only making Singaporeans pay taxes, MediSafe, out-of-pocket expenditure, MediShield and Elder Shield premiums, you also have to spend your own money to pay for integrated shield plans. When there is no need to pay for this, there is even no need to pay for MediShield premiums and there is no need to pay for out-of-pocket expenditure because what you pay in taxes and what you pay in MediSafe is enough to give Singaporeans free healthcare every year. So I'm going to leave you with this question. The PAP knows all this. It knows it's making you double pay, making you pay extra, making you pay from one medical scheme into another medical scheme so that they can then take the surplus to earn via bonds, reserves, and then the GITC and Tamasic holdings for themselves. Instead of give you free healthcare and still have excess left to accumulate so that there is longevity in this medical scheme. All this is possible in the current scheme that Singapore has, but the PAP refuses to do that and instead chooses to only return 5-10% to of what Singaporeans pay into MediSafe a year and only 1% of what Singaporeans have paid into MediSafe since 1984, while they take the other 90 to 99% to earn every year. Now you have to ask yourself, is it fair when you have the double pay and pay additional when the government takes what you pay into MediSafe to earn for themselves where there's no transparency? Is this the kind of government that you want? Or is there a government that you want that will ensure that the money that you pay is returned to you so that you get free health care? Now it's something that you should think about.